Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mr. District Attorney is brought to you by Vitalis, V-I-T-A-L-I-S. Vitalis, the famous preparation that keeps your hair well-groomed and used with the speedy 60-second workout, helps you to keep your hair. Friends, before we start tonight's dramatic story, I'd like to have a personal word with you. With our country at war, with each and every one of us determined to win this war, our government needs your material support. One way every man and woman can help is through the purchase of defense savings stamps and bonds. Buy a share in America. Buy all the defense savings bonds and stamps you can, this week and every week. Do your share in helping our country to win. Our story tonight begins in the vaulted, echoing galleries of the city museum in your district attorney's city. It is shortly past midnight, and in the lofty Egyptian hall, a single light high on the ceiling casts eerie patterns of black shadow. Suddenly, a phone rings on the desk of the night watchman, rings and shatters the silence of this modern tomb of ancient art. Hello? Hello? Oh, this is Patrick Hawk, night watchman of the city museum speaking. Hello? Hello? Well, don't be answering then. The devil take you for disturbing a man's rest. Now, what in the name of all the Tory? Who's that? Stop! Stop in your tractor and I'll shoot! Stop, I tell you! Oh, no, you don't. Ah, uh, but I do, my friend. Oh. Oh. Well, what do you make of it, Chief? No watchman. No corpus delecti. No, nothing. Yes, I know, Harrington. And we can't tell what's been stolen until the director of the museum gets here. Oh. Meanwhile, I want you to search this section of the museum. Yeah, okay, Chief. Okay, I'll take a look around. Oh. But the boys from the precinct figure it was probably just some kids got locked in after closing time. Well, that wouldn't account for the disappearance of the night watchman. That's right. And those bloodstains there. Yes, and the telephone the police found off the hook. Mm -hmm. Now, they all seem to indicate he never left the building. No. Yeah, what did you find out about that phone call, Well, Chief? Miss Miller is checking with the telephone company now. But meanwhile, we've got to locate that night watchman. Yeah, or what's left of him. Yes, look in the Egyptian room first, Harrington. That's where the night watchman's desk is. Yeah, okay. Hey. Hey, Chief, here comes somebody. Where? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's probably Anderson, director of the museum. Oh, yeah, okay, Chief. If that night watchman's here, I'll find him, dead or alive. Right. How do you do, sir? How do you do? I'm Cornwall Anderson, director of this museum. I'm the district attorney, Mr. Anderson. Oh, how do you do? Exactly what happened here tonight. Well, that's what I'm hoping you can tell me. Well, Patrick Cork, the night watchman, a devoted and trusted guard of long service. I think he could tell... He's vanished. Vanished? Yes. But how? We don't know. But tell me, is there anything in this section of the museum that might easily be sold? Oh, my dear sir, the museum is full of priceless relics. Well, yes, of course. But do you know of any particular item that might be marketable? My word, so you think... Well, yes, now that you mention it, yes... Uh, right in the next room, a real collector's prize, our latest and proudest acquisition. Yes, what is it? A priceless miniature, a Holbein, mm -hmm. an exquisite and flawless masterpiece of the golden age of miniature painting. For a moment, I was afraid... Afraid it was stolen? Yes. You see, there was a previous attempt. Yes, when? The last spring. Did you report it to the police? No, no, it happened in London. In London? Yes, where the miniature was purchased for us. Oh, yes, I see. 
And is this miniature protected by the burglar alarm system? Oh, yes, yes. Even the breaking of the glass will set off the alarm system. Well, then the breaking of the showcase in the other room must have set off the alarm. Yes. Poor Patrick must have seen the intruders, struggled with them. Then suppose you take me to the case where this miniature is kept. Of course. It's right over here in the corner of the room. I see. Well, there's nothing wrong with this case. No glass broken. No. No, there isn't. Oh, there. There's the miniature. Oh, no, and it's touched it. Yes, yes. Come here, quick. Who, who oh, was that? Harrington, my chief special investigator. Hey, chief, chief, I found yes. him. I think I found the night watchman. Yes, yes, where is he? Right over there in one of them Egyptian coffins, all, all laid out like an undertaker's done the job. My word, in a mummy case? Mummy case or coffin, he's in there. Yes, which one? The middle one, the one with the dogs and palm trees painted on it. Here. Here, I'll just open it again. Is he dead? If he ain't, he ought to be. Oh, my word, I... You said it. Oh, boy, this gives me a turn. I'm used to corpses, but this... Hey, Harrington, this man isn't dead. Huh? He's unconscious, but there's pulse action and a faint heartbeat. Well, for the love of Pete, let's get him out of here. No, he may be suffering from internal injuries. Phone for an ambulance. Yeah, right, Chief, right. now. <laughs> We're getting something. Oh, poor Patrick, why, what could have happened? You see that red welt around his throat? Why, yes, extraordinary. Oh, no, not at all. This wasn't the work of mischievous boys or amateurs, Mr. Anderson. This man was strangled by an expert. Well, Chief, it certainly looks like this museum robbery was planned by some very clever crooks. Yeah, it was extremely clever, Miss Willem. We're not dealing with thugs and gunmen. No. Any word from Harrington yet this morning? Oh, yes. He's on his way down here to the office. Mm -hmm. And he says something about Scotland Yard. Oh, yes. I wonder what he could have... Yes, this case has an international angle. You see, Anderson, the director of the museum, tells me there was an attempt to steal a prize miniature shortly before it was purchased in London. But, Chief, if there was a previous attempt, won't it be hard to check with Scotland Yard what with the war and the heavy cable traffic? Yes, but fortunately, a yard inspector is over here now on other business. I met him just a few nights ago. His name is Essex. Oh, yes, yes, I've heard of him. I'm having Harrington check with me. Oh, that sounds like Harrington, Chief. He always slams doors. Hello, Chief. Hello. Hello, Miss Miller. Hello. Well, it seems Anderson of the museum got a bum steer about that there miniature, Chief. Uh, how so? Well, according to the Scotland Yard inspector, they had a man watching the miniature and other things from the time they arrived from Amsterdam until it was shipped over here. Yes, and what happened? Well, nothing. Not a thing, Chief mean to say there was no attempt to steal it? Not a ghost of a snatch. Well, Chief, this case is beginning to go soft. Things are stolen, and they ain't stolen. Guys are dead, laid out in a coffin. The next thing you know, they're up walking around. And there's a woman in the case, Harrington. A woman? <laughs> eh, wouldn't you know it? No wonder nothing makes sense. Where does she fit in? She made the telephone call to the museum just before the watchman was strangled. Well, who is she? Where'd you pick her up? She made the call from a payphone in a drugstore. Well, we haven't picked her up. Well, and we haven't enough of a description to broadcast an alarm. <sighs> hey, Harrington, let's you and I go back to the museum. And, Miss Miller, yes, sir? I've jotted down a list of questions here, and I'd like to have the answers as quickly as possible. So phone Mr. Williams, chairman of the board of the city museum. Right away, Chief. <laughs> Oh, oui. It was unfortunate. Well, we must wait. How about no? The museum will be guarded extra well in the night. What? Today is this afternoon? But say, damn, proceed. Does not matter if you are pressed for the money. But, but, monsieur, I tell you. Oh, mais oui. This is very clever. They would not expect such a move. You have missed your calling, monsieur. Yes. Who is it? Be quiet, Ivan, a moment. Uh, it is only my confederate, monsieur. And uh, your plan is good. And I shall not fail this time. Now be at your home this afternoon and have the money ready. Au revoir, monsieur. Ivan, how many times must I tell you? Pierre, you are not going to try again. The police will not be expecting it. But last night you almost killed a man. Many times I have almost killed Yvonne, but never yet. You think you are so very smart. But one day 
You will hold the silken cord a moment too long, and someone will die. The use of the silken garotte is a fine art, ma chérie. I, I am master of that art. Even so, why can we not wait? The radio and the newspapers report it will sleet and snow this afternoon. The museum will be deserted. By tonight, we will have the money. I do not like this. You must do your part this one more time. You must talk to the guard. Keep him interested. Now, where is my cane? Fetch it to me, Yvonne. The cane? You mean the sword cane? Me, certain. Hmm. The noisy gun, it is not for me. You are a fool, Pierre. Do as I say, Yvonne. Bring the cane or I get it myself. And I use it on you. This here museum's nearly as creepy by daylight as it was last night, Chief. <laughs> oh, I was meaning to ask you, how come you stopped so long at the police lamp? Well, I was having the chief chemist prepare something that may prove to be a solution to this case, Harrington. Well, now that we're... Well, for the love of Mike, or Patrick Cork, I should say. Yes, a night watchman. Good afternoon to you, Mr. Dittler. Oh, good afternoon. To you, Mr. Harrington. How are you, sir? And thanks for your interrupting me premature way. <laughs> Think nothing of it, Mr. Cork. Hey, what are you doing on day duty, Cork? Well, after what happened last night, I was transferred to the day duty because they're shorthanded here at the museum, owing to a couple of the boys being out sick. Oh, I see. Did Mr. Anderson transfer you? No, no, it was his assistant. Mr. Anderson's off home for the day with the cold. Huh? Hey, he didn't have no cold at one o'clock this morning. Well, I was hoping to get some further information on the history of the Holbein miniature from him. Well, now, his assistant, Miss Jones, might be after having it, sir. Mm -hmm. There's a pamphlet. First, that might do. Uh, go get one of those pamphlets, Harrington. Yeah, okay, Chief. Right. Well, hello, Miss Miller. Hello. What brings you here at 90 miles an hour? No time for that now, Harrington. Oh, Chief, yes? I have the information. Good, but just a minute, Miss Miller. Right. Harrington. Yeah, Chief? Get that pamphlet from the assistant director right away. Yeah, right. Down the hall, first door to the right. Yeah, thanks. Right away, Chief. Now then, let's have that report, Miss Miller. Here you are, Chief. Mm. Your hunch was more than right. Uh -huh. Yes, so it would seem. Mm. Oh, Miss Miller, this is Patrick Cork, the watchman who was nearly strangled to death last night. Oh, hello, Mr. Cork. You had a lucky escape. <laughs> How do you do, Miss Miller? Sure and as thankful I am to be alive this day. I should say. Well, Chief, uh, what do you make of the report? Oh, it's pretty much what I'd expected to have confirmed. Um, do you have the key to the showcase guarding the Holbein miniature, Cork? I have that, Mr. District Attorney. Good. Open the case, will you? Open the case, yes. Well, now, I don't rightly know, sir. Well, I'll have to disconnect the alarm system first. That'll be quite all right. Well, if you say so, sir, I'll uh, disconnect the wire here at the switch. Uh, would you be wanting to take the miniature out, sir? No. No, I'm not even going to touch the miniature myself. Mm, well, let that day body just try to touch it. I'm itching to get me hands on the devil that came across to choking me to death. Oh, just a minute, Clark. And now get this straight. If anyone... Anyone tries to steal this miniature, don't raise a hand to stop them. Uh, but to... Now remember, don't try to stop them. Come on, you go. It is almost closing time, and we must act quickly. Well, they must desert it. Pierre, this may be a trap. Nonsense. The sleeting. That is why no one is here, and it is perfect. Now, go talk with the guard. Get him away from the miniature case. Into the Egyptian room. And give me time to cut the glass. Suppose the alarm goes off as it did last night. Even so. There is only the guard. I will take care of him. There he comes. Engage him in conversation for me. Get him away from here. Oh, watchman. I beg your pardon. Oh, good afternoon, miss. What can I do for you? I came to see the Egyptian collection. Where is it? Well, right down the hall, miss, around the corner to your left. Can you not take me there? Oh, that I can. And the gentleman, too. Oh. Why, oh, I beg your pardon. The young lady and I are not together. Oh, I see. And uh, what would you be wanting to see? Hmm, nothing in particular. You wouldn't be interested in miniatures now, would you? 
Uh, please, monsieur, take me to the Egyptian room. Well, I can't, no. Speak up, man. Let me hear your voice again. What is my voice to you? It is the same. You tried to steal that miniature last night. You tried to strangle me. You come along with me. Pierre, the old man has recognized you. Yes, so he has. That I have, all right. Now, come along. Not now. I have another idea. Oh! Oh! You have killed this old man. I have merely destroyed a witness. Come, Yvonne. Now we will get the miniature. Well, Patrick Cork has ignored your district attorney's warning. We'll learn the outcome and hear the surprising developments of this case in just a moment. But first, men... I think you'll agree that the quick way to succeed in your business is to look successful. For as you know, men who look successful, men who are well-groomed and confident, get attention mighty fast. And Vitalis helps you to look successful, helps you to look like a winner so that you're always ready when opportunity comes your way. Because Vitalis gives you good-looking, well-groomed hair. You see, Vitalis makes your hair obey your comb, makes it lie smoothly and smartly in place and makes it stay in place all day long, all evening, but with none of that offensive, gooey, patent leather shine you see on some men's hair. Instead, Vitalis gives your hair a natural look, a really well-groomed look. So men use Vitalis and have the kind of handsome hair that helps you register a winning impression in your business contacts and in your social contacts, too. Use Vitalis and have the kind of good-looking hair that helps win you the respect of men and the admiration of women. Why don't you get a bottle of Vitalis the next time you're in a drugstore? Now, back to your district attorney. Sergeant Goshen of the 4th Precinct is on the phone. He's calling from the museum. It's all right. I'll take it here. Hey, I'll bet you the trap sprung, Chief. Hello? Worse than that, Harrington. Hello, Sergeant. Yes? What? The miniature is gone? Cork is injured? What? Seriously? Yes, well, get him to the hospital. Get him the best specialist in the city. Yes, I'll be there as soon as I can. It's all right. Goodbye. What happened, Chief? I thought you told the old geezer to lay off. Yes, I did. I should have known a man can't forget a lifetime of training in an emergency. He tried to stop the thieves. A man and a woman with a French accent. And got strangled again. No, Harrington. This time, the thief used a cane sword. Ran him through. What? Well, what are we waiting for, Chief? They've grabbed the bait. Let's go get them. Come into the study, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Was it necessary to bring your wife to my home? Yes, uh, we are leaving the city immediately, Monsieur Anderson. Monsieur, give us the money and let us go quickly. Why? Why are you in such a hurry? What happened at the museum? Did you bungle again? No, this time I have the miniature. But unfortunately... Unfortunately what? Unfortunately, the watchman recognized me and tried to prevent our escape. Oh, how could he? Cork is on the night shift. It would seem that he was transferred to the day shift. Ah, yes, it would. Did you use that silk cord again? No. I had only my cane, so... You murdered the guard? There was nothing else to do. Well, you shouldn't have come here after doing a thing like that. I have no intention of getting mixed up in a murder. It is too late for that, monsieur. You are mixed up with us. And if we are cut, you also will pay for the crime. I have your $5,000. Give me the miniature. I beg your pardon, monsieur. Now we need $10,000. Yes, though there is a little more expensive. You agreed to sell the miniature for five. I haven't 10000 and I can't raise it. Well, how much money have you, monsieur Anderson? $5,000. That's all I agreed to pay, and that's all you'll get. Pierre, we are wasting time. Take the money and let us get out of here. Here is the miniature. Now, where is the money? The money is in my private safe over here. Ah, a private vault for all the art treasures. 
This is not the first time you have robbed your museum. That is my business. It seems practice in crime has steeled your nerves, monsieur. Hmm. Pierre, someone is at the door. Whom are you expecting? Is this some trick, monsieur? I'm not expecting anyone. The servants are off, and I'll have to answer the door. My car is out front. <laughs> Whoever it is will know I'm at home. Then go to the door. Get rid of them. Oh, it may be some friend. I'll have to admit for a moment. Here, you must hide. Uh, get in the vault, quickly, both of you. Don't be ridiculous, monsieur. Harry, get in that vault. Oh, here, here. Take this miniature with you. We have no intention of getting into your vault. It would kill us both. For once, Yvonne, you are right. However, we will take the miniature. I have no time to argue with you. You involve me in one murder. It is a trap. He has a gun. A trap or not, get in that vault. It all depends on how badly you've bungled. If it's the police, if they've followed you here... Get in, do you hear me, madam? You wouldn't dare use that gun, monsieur. Wouldn't I? I think you would, Devon. Come. You know I would. Get in that vault. Mr. District Attorney. Yes. And my secretary and assistant, Miss Miller. How do you do, Mr. Anderson? How do you do? Do you mind if we come in? The snow is rather wet. Oh, of course, of course. Thank you. I suppose you're here for some more information about the Holbein miniature. A miniature has been stolen, Mr. Anderson. What? Why, how did it happen? Had the police any clues? Oh, yes. Yes, there were quite a number of clues. Oh, I see you have a nice fire going in your study... Suppose we talk in there. Oh, yes, yes, of course. This is terrible. I want to help in every way I can. I... Oh, Mr. Anderson, you're so pale. Are you sure your cold hasn't turned to grip? No, I don't think so. Perhaps you'd like a drink. I know this must be very upsetting for you. Oh, yes, I, I believe I will. Oh, will you join me? The whiskey is right here. Or rye, if you prefer. Uh, some soda? Thank you. But if you don't mind, I'll have a plain glass of water. Oh, yes, of course, of course. Well, that'll be enough water, thank you. Oh, I... Clumsy of me. I've spilled the water all over your hands. Quite all right, no harm. Chief, you are right. Look at Mr. Anderson's hands. Uh, what about my hands? Look at them, Anderson. Why, they're turning purple. He's had the miniature in his hands, Chief. It must be somewhere in this house. What's the meaning of this? What are you talking about? How dare you insist? Save your indignation, Anderson. Where is the man with the French accent and his woman accomplice? Oh, I don't know. I know nothing about them. We'll get them. The guard described them. Well, then catch them. Why come here and accuse me? Your telltale hand. You've had the miniature in your hand. That's a lie. This purple in my hands means nothing. <laughs> it isn't proof of anything. Sufficient proof to place you under arrest, Mr. Anderson. Arrest? You're going to arrest me? Yes. And on the basis of evidence I already have, I'll get a warrant to search this house for the miniature. You can't. You have no right. A perfectly legal right. <laughs> well, will you come with us of your own free will? Or must I call in my special investigator and have him handcuffed? Handcuffed? Oh, no. I'm not going, and you won't take me. Chief, he's carrying a gun. Yes, so I see. You better hand over that gun, Anderson. It's rather late in life for you to start making murder your business. Don't make me kill you. I'm getting away, that's all. Now, don't follow me. I'm going to get away. You ain't going. No! Oh, oh that hurts. Not too rough with him. I'm trying to be as gentle as I can. Boy, did I have a time getting in the back window. But I didn't do it. I didn't tell him to kill poor old Cork. I'm not to blame. You're a pretty cold-blooded man, Mr. Anderson. But a judge and jury will decide that. And I think I know how they'll decide. Well, oh, Harrington, just as soon as you've got the handcuffs on him, come over here to this vault. I think that's where we'll find Mr. Anderson's two companions in crime. <laughs> Before your district attorney tells you when and why he first suspected Anderson and the means he used to prove his guilt, here's a special message for every woman listening in tonight. Now, you want your husband or your sweetheart to do all he can to keep the hair he has, don't you? Then tell him about Vitalis and the famous 60-second workout. Yes, tell him to use Vitalis and the speedy 60-second workout because it helps a man to keep the hair he still has. For you see, men, the easy Vitalis workout helps in four different ways. Four very important ways. It loosens up your tight, dry scalp and really gives your hair a chance. It stimulates the circulation. It routes unsightly loose dandruff. 
And it helps prevent excessive falling hair. So, men, why don't you start using Vitalis and have good-looking, well-groomed hair every day? Use Vitalis in that easy, speedy workout and let it help you to keep the hair you still have. Ask your druggist for a bottle of Vitalis tomorrow or even tonight. And now, here is your district attorney. Well, ladies and gentlemen, fortunately, Patrick Cork did not die. But Anderson, Pierre, and Yvonne were tried, convicted, and received long prison sentences for their crimes. Oh, Chief, I think it was grand you knew Pierre and Yvonne were in that safe. Well, muddy footprints leading to the vault gave me that clue. Oh, and Chief, hadn't you better tell our audience why you suspected Anderson? Yes. His one simple lie caused us to investigate him. We soon discovered other art treasures had vanished from the museum and had been unreported. We learned that the city trustees were investigating and had already given Anderson a notice of dismissal as of January 1st. That and a need of money prompted him to take one last desperate chance. Yeah, Chief, and the trap you set for him was something. Boy, you sure caught him (laughs) purple-handed. Yes, Harrington. And that was simply a matter of sprinkling the miniature with an almost invisible aniline powder dye, which causes the hands of anyone touching it to turn purple if they come in contact with water. What about next week, Chief? Well, next week, ladies and gentlemen, we again have quite a different case and one of the most baffling sagas of double murder this office was ever called upon to solve. The case of the bittersweet. So don't miss the case of the bittersweet at the same time next week. Until then, thank you and good night. And remember, buy defense savings bonds and stamps. of all characters in tonight's dramatization are fictitious and any resemblance to names of living persons or actual places is purely coincidental. Jay Justin was featured in the title role, Len Doyle as Harrington, Vicki Vola as Miss Miller. The music was under the direction of Peter Van Steeden and the author was Jerry McGill. Mr. District Attorney is brought to you by the Bristol Myers Company, makers of Vitalis the largest selling preparation of its kind for keeping your hair well-groomed. Just think of the word vital and add I-S. Vitalis, Vitalis for your hair. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.